All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining this Q&A call or watching this later. I'm George Cow, and I'm here with my buddy, Taylor Jacobson, the founder of Focusmate. And uh, I have been a huge fan of Focusmate since I was just looking at this. 2017 was when I started using it. I was one of the first they did like crowdfunding back then a little bit. And so I, I threw like a, a few dollars to say, oh, I want to see this succeed. And, <laughs> and, uh, and so now I'm apparently I'm a part owner, is that right? If Focusmate. <laughs> I'm like 0 0.00, put a bunch of zeros and 1% owner of Focusmate. So um, I, I, it's been just revolutionary for my work. I use Focusmate. I, I started with Focusmate like three hours a day, something like that. Two to three hours a day was all I could stand. And then like over time, I just kept building up and now I can easily do six, seven hours a day sometimes. And it has been transformational for my business. Um, as you all know, my business has changed a lot since seven years ago. And um, But today we're not just to here to talk about Focusmate. I, a lot of you here are small business owners, um, solopreneurs, perhaps. And we just wanted to do a Q&A um, with Taylor and me. If you have any just, you know, questions about how do we maybe focus better or how do we run a business? Taylor has a much bigger business than me. Still, it was considered a small business, right? Just small, smallish team. Um, I'm a solopreneur with a few uh, very, very part-time contractors. But uh, both of us have been there um, in terms of the, the solopreneur and kind of built things up and had to find, you know, product market fit or get clients. Uh, Taylor um, has been a coach before. I know a bunch of you here are coaches as well. Um, I think probably all of you, most of you who are here know me. I have been doing business coaching essentially since 2009 and have taught a bunch of online courses now. There are something like 22 online courses on my website. And I really, like I said, ramp things up a lot in the past seven years because I have had a lot of focus time with Focusmate. So um, let me just pause here. Taylor, I'm gonna let you say anything you want about your background and um, Focusmate if you want. Thanks, George. Um, that was a phenomenal lead in. Um, well, I'll just throw you back some love, um, and just say, you know, we're, I think we're here together because we, we resonate a lot with the same approach and, um, you've been somebody who, um, let's say has thought really hard about and codified a lot of approaches, um, to business, um, and productivity. Um, but let's say business that have just helped, put some wind in my sails, helped give me confidence around whether I'm, I was going to say about, I'm not crazy, but it doesn't really matter if I'm crazy. It's more of just like, there's a way that I want to do things. It feels right to me. And, um, you've been probably the most impactful voice in the space in terms of just, um, affirming that that's okay. And then also really, um, deepening a, um, and actually a logic-based, um, kind of unpacking of, of why kind of heart-based or authentic business is, is such a great option. Um, and I want to moralize it. Um, but for me, it's just what's really resonated and been right for my path through the world. So, uh, thanks for that. And yeah, I just oh, want to affirm <laughs> for all y'all, that's a big part of why George and I are here is we've kind of just been in touch in different ways over the years and um, supporting each other in different ways. And so really excited to be, um, to be teaming up. Yeah. Um, my, what is there to share? Um, well, let, you know, being a lifelong procrastinator is a big part of what led me into focus mate. Um, but also let's just say feeling the, the pain of, um, knowing what you're capable of and I'll say craving to experience yourself being that, uh, I think on some level, that's kind of like the most, that's how I experience like the top of Maslow's pyramid is, um, there's something that's really missing when we're not 
being who we want to be. Um, and so that's a pain that I felt acutely throughout my twenties. And honestly, until I, uh, started until I, you know, started building the first version of focus mate in a small community of, of people who are just manually setting up these, uh, these co-working sessions with each other. And George was one of those people. And, um, it was, it was probably about 10 people, that first little crew who were setting up these sessions manually. And who, when I was alone at the time and really everybody thought this was kind of a silly idea, you know, before the pandemic, um, and those few people who were just so into it and they didn't care that it was ugly and inconvenient and whatever they wanted to do this thing with me. And George is one of those people. Um, one of the first people to, uh, put down money for anything that we, that we offered. So, um, anyways, I'm, I'm not going any particular direction with the no, share. Those are a few things that come to mind. Dang. And, um, I'm so glad that all of you showed up and, and it's really nice to kind of just have a small, small group to chat with and would love to answer any questions. Thank, thank you, Taylor, man. Um, I'm honored. I'm honored that I have been any, uh, positive impact to, to the, uh, building or growth of focus me because, um, yeah, I, I'm just, you know, a genuine fan, <laughs> true fan and, uh, of you and of, of what you've built and, it's not easy because I've, I've actually tried creating co-working groups <laughs> over the years before and even during focus made just, you know, for my, for my uh, clients and whatnot. And it is hard to do. It is, it is really hard to, to get people to show up for, for a co-working thing. And this is why focus made exists. And it's like, it's always reliable. It always is a fallback any time of day or night. You, <laughs> I want to work. Um, I feel like I'm alone. No, I'm not. Okay, there's somebody here that's that's working alongside me. So it's really great for for not just productivity, but for for um, for aloneness, for not being alone. You know. So anyway, thank you, thank you so much. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, Brigitte, I actually Brigitte just <laughs> chatted. Says I I met George on Focus. I didn't realize that actually, Brigitte, because um, we've been working together on Focus Me for, for so long that I'd forgotten that was how, and that's, that's amazing. There are several people that I've met on Focus Me that I've attempted to touch with over the years. But anyway, let, let me just pause the Focus Me thread uh, for a moment. Um, actually, one more thing, one more thing before we pause. I want to actually quickly see, I've, I've launched a poll on, on the screen here for those of you who are live, and then we can, uh, I'm just going to give you a moment to make a selection and then I'll, 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 I'll share what the results are. All right, so about evenly, um, you know, a third are paid users, a third are free users, a third are have not yet used Focusmate. So that's that's interesting. If you haven't yet, well, of course, uh, maybe today we'll, we'll encourage you to, to give it a try. And also, um, very importantly, I have a Focusmate group, which means if you sign up to my group, there's no additional charge. Um, uh, you just pay regularly for Focusmate um, or, or, or do the free version. Either one's fine. You can join my group, which means you'll be paired up with me and others in my group more often. The algorithm will kind of pair us. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, you can click on the link below. Those of you watching the recording, I'll put the link below as well. You can click on that link and, and sign up for my group if you want to. I'm on Focusmate often, um, so you'll, you'll see me there and we'll be able to work together. Okay. So um, without further ado, let's get into the questions that were sent in advance, and then would love to take any questions from those of you who are here as well. Um, one of the common questions uh, was about what kind of group we are, group program we're developing. And I just wanna answer very briefly. We're still very much in the discovery process of what that is. So we're not ready to present anything to you yet and to say, well, you can sign up here or whatever, but we're gonna, we're going to still make sure that we have a design that um, is is what uh, is what people need that 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 you know, our people need. So um, we can set that aside. If you, of course, are interested in some kind of group uh, coaching program that involves Focusmate somehow, you can of course chat or comment below and and let us know what ideas you might have. But right now, we'll just say that we're still in development, so we'll kind of move on from those questions and. Uh, happy to answer questions um, about business, about marketing, about productivity, because Taylor and I know uh, have experience with all all these things, and we may have different perspectives that that can help you. So, so let me get into those questions um, first. I'll start with a couple questions that I think Taylor and I both have something to say 
which is uh, number one. So let's say that you currently are, you know, are a solopreneur. Let's say you're a coach and you meet with clients, consultant, coach. Um, you meet you meet with clients, maybe one on one, and you also have a group, perhaps um, that you meet with. And meeting with clients is well, it 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 takes energy. Obviously, it's it's kind of the maybe the core of your work, um, and especially for those of us who are more introverted or more sensitive, um, we might feel like, okay, the client meetings is a lot of the energy from us. How do we still reserve energy, time, creative juice for content creation or for other creative projects that will grow our business? Um, so um, Taylor, do you wanna start work first? Do you want me to start first? How, how do you feel? Um, maybe we can kind of popcorn a little bit. Sure. Um, and I imagine you might inspire me to think of some things that you know, yeah, can, I can comment on, but why don't I just start with one thing Sure, uh, sure. <laughs> and then I'll kick it to you. Um, this isn't exactly a direct answer, but for sure, the most impactful thing for me has just been, um, reducing dramatically the number of commitments that I have and being very honest with myself and very, uh, like, um, searching for the right word, but kind of extreme in terms of also being honest about what gives me energy and what drains energy. Um, so that's, that is the big first cut. That's kind of my 80, 20 and, a lot of that was overcoming some of my like conditioned patterns around saying yes to things and, and drawing ego strength from how much I could accomplish. Sorry. There's some kind of, I don't know if you guys can hear the Mexico horn talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this might be the Q George, uh, right yeah, here. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll take over from here. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. I, uh, funny thing is Taylor and I are now both living in Mexico except I live in a tiny village, but sometimes we have like, <laughs> the difference with the tiny village here is we have like tamales trucks going by and they have large speakers saying tamales, tamales. <laughs> yeah. Whereas for you, you have like traffic noise, right? Um, okay, so- they, they stopped talking. So I can I can land the plan at least on that on that one, <laughs> then I'll, I'll kick it back to you. Sure. But yeah, so, so the first cut for me is, is just reducing as much as, as much as possible. And then there's kind of like a part two to that, which, you know, I, I, when I started focus mate, I actually had a second job and I still have that second job, um, because I just wanted to reduce the financial burden of this business, um, in terms of covering my expenses. And that was really tiring for me at, at many points during this journey where I just wanted to be able to focus, you know, for God's sakes, I just wanted to be able to focus on less things. And, um, and there was a point where I renegotiated that contract where I kind of just said, can I get paid more? Can I consolidate those clients all into the same day? And to kind of just give a little of the story, like I, I was organizing these support groups with startup executives, really busy, kind of important people, let's say. And at the time I had a relationship to it, like I just these are, there's too many people. They're too busy. They're too important. I don't have enough control to change this, but I really want the money. And a friend of mine at the time just challenged me. And they were just like, is that true? Do you really not have any control over this? And it just like something's kind of clicked in my mind. And I was like, of course I have control. I'm just scared to do it. And I, I basically forced it. The, it was like 40 C-suite executives to change their schedules around to all meet on the same day, you know, that's amazing. Actually, and, that's, that's a huge, uh, that's like a, that's a huge endeavor. I can't believe you, you made that happen. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't, I also didn't really explain. I just said, you know, we need to do this. You know, a lot of, a, a lot of us recovering people pleasers over explain everything. And um, so if that's you, you know, it, the learn, the, the, the kind of learning curve is like, what do you really want? Right. And 
just start believing it's possible and then kind of make the changes and don't have to explain yourself. So that was one concrete example of moving this thing that was really tiring me out and distracting. I moved it. It was, it, it's still tiring and distracting, but it's consolidated into just two days a month now. Um, so eliminating ruthlessly and then kind of like taking that dial and just cranking it as far as you can on other things that, that are draining. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, my, my main answer is about managing your energy um, in a, in a really honest way. I love uh, that. To... Wow. Yeah. On what, what an example that's, that's very inspiring. I can always keep pointing back to like, well, if you could get 40 people, 40 CEOs to change their schedules. Anything can happen. <laughs> you could do anything. Um, okay. So I, um, this is one of those like important, but not urgent questions. Like we have so many things in our, in, you know, goals in our business and personal life where it's like, well, that wouldn't that be nice if I did that on a, a probably a regular basis? Like, wow, I can't believe what kind of growth I might experience. Um, so it is important for the long term, but it's not urgent. It's great for the long term. Whereas today, oh, my, I got to prepare for my clients for tomorrow, you know, that kind of thing. Or, or oh, I got to, you know, prepare my taxes or whatever like that. That's that's those are urgent things. And I love what Taylor said, like, if you don't pare down on as much as possible of a lot of things that really are not important, sometimes urgent, but not important, right? Then you'll never be able to make room, you know, dedicate time for the important but not urgent, such as content creation. So here's the thing. No one is going to force you to create content. This is like one of the things I've, I've like learned over the years. It's like, no matter, like at this point, I have an audience, I'm grateful of about 10,000 people, let's say like 10,000 subscribers, like readers of my content over different platforms. And still 10,000 people, like if I, if I went, like I, I, I was fantasizing, like if I, if I didn't post on the, on the regular Mondays that I post, someone's going to knock down my doors. It's George, where's your article? Like, where? But it, it still hasn't happened. And maybe if I get to hundred thousand, then people will be like crying if I don't do my post on Monday and Thursdays or whatever, but it still hasn't happened. I still have to show up and go, I don't, no one's going to ask me to, but I'm going to post on Mondays and Thursdays. Actually, though, technically I post on Mondays. I schedule a pre-posted thing from in the past on Tuesday. And then I, um, I post, anyway, I post Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays, essentially. And so four, four days a week. And that rhythm works really well for me. I kind of come to it over time. No one is asking for it. But I know that if I don't show up and do it, I won't see the growth that I've seen over time. So um, one of the people added to the question saying, yeah, this is, uh, I want to add to the question, the same question here. Like I, I'm seeing clients, maybe have a group, but I'm kind of tapped out with growth. And here's the thing, here's the thing, very important. Solopreneurs, you might find yourself like busy at one point in your, in your, in your life, in your career, busy with clients. And then if you and then clients, as you notice, will complete, right? Like, oh, you finish your three month, your six month, your 18 month contract with a client or whatever. And then suddenly plummets. I'm like, what? Now I gotta go, you know, hunting for clients. Whereas if you were consistent with with putting content out there, you're much more likely to have a steady growth over time because you're gonna just gradually grow your audience. And then when you when you have client openings, you can just kind of briefly announce that and and um and it's much easier to fill um i'll say i'll say one more thing but uh, and then you know taylor if anything else we can we can wrap up from there um meeting with clients and and you know meeting with clients is also a treasure trove of content like you have to think of it so, so I, I invite you to think of it this way you can actually help a lot more people with content with the, con the free content you post versus meeting with clients, obviously. You, you're meeting with clients, maybe you help them more deeply. Who knows, actually? Some of your free content can tr change people's lives. I've had people who have written that to me. They watch my videos or they read my stuff and like, I've never bought a thing from you. I don't know when I'll ever buy a thing, but I just want you to know, this has really shifted my mind or my heart and my actions. And I just want to think, I'm like, amazing, amazing. I, I, I seems to have made a big impact on someone. They're not even a paid client. and and one person saying that is probably representing, I don't know, five or 10, right? Who never have the chance to write. So 
I think of it as content is, so this is the thing, content is actually my main work. Like that's actually my main positive impact work. It's just that the clients support my content habit. Like I invite you all to flip it. And right now, even those of you who are like, oh, I'm just trying to get my first client, first 10 clients or whatever. Guess what? You get to do your main work already. We're just putting free content out there that might um, uplift or transform somebody, okay? With your experience, with your story, with your, with your authenticity. So I look at meeting with clients and some, and some, of, some of you who are in my group program are like, yeah, George, we know. Uh, I look at meeting with my clients as like material that I use, right? Oh, great. This is material I could put out there more, more, more widely, which I do. So I, I, when I'm recording a group session, I will often take my client off of the, the video on Zoom and I'll record my response, which then becomes a YouTube video. Or then that might become a blog post or whatever like that, which then impacts way more people than my, than my few clients that, have, that, that heard it on that call or my one client. One-on-one uh, -on -one clients is different. I don't go, all right, I'm going to take you off the screen and record something. No, that, but with the one-on-one -on -one client, what I might do is after the client meeting, I'll like take a pause and I'll quickly either record something you know, with my phone or write it down, say, oh my gosh, this was an insight that could serve a lot more people. So um, Taylor, anything else you wanna add or we can always move on? Um, well, keeping an eye on time, it, is this an important theme? I mean, I have a couple more things that, that came up. I think so, um, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think here's the thing, like, like having the ability to consistently create outside of this is gonna pay me dollars right away has been a consistent pain point or problem is frustration, a difficult, uh, a hurdle actually for a lot of my people. And I think a lot of yeah. just people overall. Yeah. So I'll throw in a couple of things here. Yeah. Um, I'm much newer to the content game, so I'll, I'll give that disclaimer, but, um, you know, one specific challenge that I experience that I imagine some of you do is the sharpening the sword versus cutting, not the sharpening the ax versus cutting down the tree. And, using the idea that we're sharpening the sword to go out and keep learning. And um, for me, it's been important to really be discerning about, do I need more learning? Do I need to, you know, th th spending time on webinars like this or email newsletters or reading books or, or, or we're so inundated with other people's content right now. And it's for me, one of the stickiest areas where I feel like I'm getting closer to the destination, but I'm not actually creating content. And there's many things like that. There's many kind of sticky areas where we find ourselves uh, investing time. And it's, there's certainly like the Netflix of wasting time, but there's, there's the things like learning about creating content that feel and sound a lot closer to, to creating content. And so therefore it's easier sometimes to justify doing it. And I just had to get really honest with myself at some point and be like, dude, you don't need to learn more. You know, you need to just get, get out the laptop and do some writing. Um, so that's kind of a sub point to the reducing as much as possible to just reclaim more energy and, um, of course, there is a role for learning. Of course, it's not, a you know, I don't want to be reductionist about it, but. Yeah, I'll only take my courses, but everyone else, yeah. you don't have to, yeah. <laughs> That's a great heuristic, just George's courses. Um, but yeah, just being honest with ourselves, like is, is the thing that's holding me back right now, is it really learning? Is it really whatever your thing is that you invest time in that's not, con you know, creating content? Um, so just being really honest about all the things that we're doing that aren't creating content and whether, we really need to do them. And I'll, I'll give another example, actually, which is kind of an ironic one, but I, I have a friend who's building a business and he, he's getting lots of leads without content, but he thinks that he needs content. And so I really challenged him to say, is this really the, the obstacle that's in the way of growing your business by 10 X right now? Or is this just a story you're making up that you should be creating, you know, putting out one piece of content a week? And, you know, he thought hard about it. And his conclusion was basically, you know what? One piece of content is enough. 
to eliminate the obstacle for the next 10 X in my business. Right. And then he can revisit later. So yeah, that's the first thing, just challenging y'all to be honest about anything you're doing. That's not creating content. Is it really helping? And then the other thing is, um, we're given so many external templates for kind of the right way or the right amount, especially of content to do. And I just had to get to like, sure. Five pieces of content a week might grow your business faster than two. But if, if it's not working for your life, it doesn't matter. And where you're at might be the place where what feels aligned, what feels easeful, what feels like a healthy edge is two pieces of content, you know? And as soon as you go to three, you just suddenly you're stressed out more often. You're feeling behind, you're feeling insecure. You're putting out shitty content. Um, so, you know, we live in the, in the real world and we got to pay our bills and our rent and whatever. So you might be in a situation where stress is just the, your life right now, but again, it's a place to challenge yourself. Are you creating more trouble than it's worth? Because you're committing to something that you don't actually, you're not actually committed to, right? There's some parts of you that aren't a yes to it, you know? So for me, I just had to right size my content rhythm to my life, my other commitments, my other desires. And, and when I did that, the cool thing was that I got to enjoy creating content because I wasn't doing it from a place of pushing. Mm -hmm. I was doing it from a place of, I love creating content and this rhythm feels great. And my commitment is just a reminder to, it's like a reminder of the rhythm that feels right for my life. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I really, I appreciate that so much. And um, just another thing about this this like right sizing is to understand that I, I, I feel like every piece of content actually is supposed is to, it's more meaningful if it contributes to a larger project. So like whenever I'm writing, I'm writing a chapter of a future book, a possible chapter doesn't have, I don't have to use it, but at least it's like, it's not just something that's like a throwaway, like, okay, I'll never see it again. No, no, no. I'm tracking it. So let's see how well that does. If it does well, that's going to be a chapter of the future book. Um, if I'm recording a video, that video could be one of my best hundred videos on my YouTube uh, playlist. You know what I mean? So it's like everything you create is connected to a larger project. And of course, ultimately, the largest project is you really grow a lot when you ex reflect what experience the world, consolidate your learnings, reflect on that, and then share it with others. You grow a lot and then you help a lot of other people. And um, last thing, and then we'll move on is. Um, Focus, mate, <laughs> helps a lot too, by the way. Uh, actually, someone, and thank you, Tomar, for, for asking. Just to be clear, Focusmate doesn't use Zoom. So you can be on Focusmate. Someone, the, your Focusmate buddy can, can still be seeing you while you are making a Zoom video or content. You, know, you can open up Zoom and record a video or do it. And I do that. Okay. This is my Friday Focusmate time. So all of you who happen to catch me at, um, it would be 8.30 a.m. on, on 8.30 a.m. Pacific on Fridays. If you happen to get one of, my, one of those slots with me, I'm creating, I'm, I'm making my weekly video at that point. You'll, yeah, so I'll say, hi, hi, folks, mate, buddy. I'm going to make two videos right now. One, one for Facebook Live, one for Instagram Live. And then you'll like see me like talking. Obviously, I'll mute myself so you don't hear me. You see me talking. And that, that deadline is really helpful for me because it's like, okay, I have to outline, you know, kind of like confirm my video and make two videos within the focus mate session. Extremely helpful. So, so anyway, that's, uh, that's something to consider. Um, okay. Let me, let's go on to another question. I, I think these are, these are, um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Taylor, you, you said you, you do that too, right, right there in the chat. Okay. So there's two questions that are similar and, and so maybe others have it too, which is, um, how do we get more um, group interaction uh, when we are facilitating a group of some kind? So, um, so for example, let's say, and you know, Taylor, you and I have both experiences on this. You facilitate a group of CEOs. I facilitate a group of solopreneurs. Some of you here, by the way, feel free to comment below. You are part of groups. You facilitate groups. We can all chip in on on our thoughts here. By if you want to chat, so. Um, 
whether it's like you're, you're, you're doing an online course, you're facilitating a group, or you're facilitating a mentorship kind of, uh, you know, development thing, or, you know, of course we do Zoom, Zoom, you know, live Zoom is helpful for the group to get together. Q&A is helpful, but any other, any other ideas, um, anything else you want to say, Taylor, do you want to, do you have any thoughts you want to start with? You want me to go first? Yeah, I, I don't think I'm clear on the question. So the question, yeah. So the yeah. question is like, let's say you have a group, well, thinking about your group, how do you get them to interact more with one another and just kind of make use of the program more? Hmm. And to facilitate, facilitate sort of group, um, facilitate a good experience of the group. Um, so they were, they're making use of the program and therefore, you know, you're, you're feeling like you're, you're doing a good job of running the group. Great. Yeah. Well, I'll kick us off with just one idea here and, you know, get us flowing. Um, for me, for sure, the biggest factor is the alignment, let's say the, the level of alignment and commitment from the individual participants to the purpose of the group and the culture of, of like, well, the purpose of the group and why we're there. Um, so I've had groups that didn't work so well, where on some level they were all they were all sold on the reason for being there, but um, it was like less of an inspiring vision of what we were doing there. It's much more tactical utility value add. Whereas the groups that have worked really really well, I really it's like I pour my heart out into what what are we doing here. It's like very. Um, yeah, just a higher, more aspirational, more heartfelt um, pitch, if you will, an invitation. And yeah, I'm running two groups right now that are, it's like perfect examples of each one. And the group that really works, they're just excited about a certain level of intimacy. And they're so, they're just so committed to what we're up to. And the other ones are still getting value, but it's just a lot more utility value and less of like a mission, vision, sense of belonging, right? Like this, this other group, they're like really part of something together. Um, and so that, I think, I think that makes more difference than anything. And, and I mention that because it's really hard to turn down clients or to say, I don't think you're quite the right fit for this. Hmm. It's also hard to... It, we sometimes feel like we're narrowing the aperture of who we're considering when we express more of our heart. And we're like, if I'm more vulnerable in explaining what a thing is, um, it's more polarizing. It's going to be more obvious to, to some people that they just don't really resonate with, you know, the ways that I'm weird or whatever. Um, and so you, maybe you might feel like you're converting more people into that thing. Um, or maybe you Sometimes we feel like we need to take a client, um, but to create that kind of frothy <laughs> frenzy, like of, of happiness in a, in a group experience, for me, it's been about um, creating it as something that I'm really, really excited about and then selling them on exactly that and like really helping both of us feel like, are we both really, really excited about the same thing? And then if so, come on in to this, you know, really special experience. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. That is amazing. I, I feel like I can learn a lot from that, actually. I'm going to reflect on, on this. And, and but Taylor, have, I'm going to ask you, since we're, we're on this, this thread here, do you then reactivate, re-energize the group with a vision on some regular basis? Like, do you remind them once a quarter, once a month, or how do you... Well, of course, when you first come in, there's that, there's that excitement. How do you maintain that? You know, um, I haven't thought about this before, but it, there's totally a flywheel effect. So okay. um, with a group that is like that, I'm totally letting my freak flag fly much more often because I feel safer. I feel more, then I'm more playful. I'm more vulnerable. Um, 
I can be more demanding and direct also because of that, right? I mean, we're, depending on the context, um, I might be giving some very direct feedback or challenging somebody. Those are important forms of value add, right? If somebody's kind of stuck in a blind spot, um, we need to be more direct. And so, and, and those, you know, even being playful can often help us be more direct, right? So um, I don't necessarily have to even put as much structure into my re-declaring the vision because I'm so much more in the pocket with um, in a space that's so much more aligned for me. And then the group members themselves, they start kind of creating their own lore. Um, this was one of the, it was a CTO group. And um, one of them said, you know what? We're actually more like a men's group that has an interest in technology. <laughs> and that's not what it is. It's a CTO group. But because he's so into it, right? He started, he created this kind of new piece of lore that he transmitted to the rest of the group. That's kind of his version of declaring the vision uh, that, you know, a men's group implies like a higher level of intimacy and deeper support and, and a wider scope of things we can talk about, right? So um, the truth is I, I haven't had to do a lot because I get so excited. I am genuinely excited about that vision that I always just want to talk about it. And I feel safe enough to do so because of the kind of selection effect. That is, that is inspir inspiring and you know, some, uh, Jenny in, in the live chat, Jenny said, yeah, it's very inspiring and practical. And uh, I love the safety aspect of the group facilitator too, Jenny wrote. Yeah, I, I love this, man. Um, I feel like this, what you just heard can, is not only, good leadership, uh, whether it's a small group or a larger group, but it's also useful as a marketing advice. I mean, it's like, if you think about whatever you're starting, if you're starting a group or, yeah, I guess it's, a, you could apply this one-to-one, -one, getting one-to-one -one clients as well, but certainly a group. It's like, if you really believe in it and you believe how special this group is going to be because of your energy, your unique energy, your unique modality or whatever combination of experience you have, or, or you, maybe you already have a few people or something and there's this particular special energy there. Like if you can actually, um, if you see someone and you're like, oh, that would be a perfect, great addition. And like your approach is much, well, it's authentic. <laughs> it's authentic. It's an authentic invitation rather than like, oh, I hope, you know, I make some money here by getting some people to sign up. I think. So I, I I love that very much. Um, so I'll 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 add my uh my two cents to this, and then we'll we'll open up to to other questions. Oh, I think I have one more present question, and then we'll open up. <laughs> so I have a I have a I have a funny, uh, very different answer to this. I get a group to participate because I pay them to participate. <laughs> Let me explain. Nobody actually likes me. I just pay them. Um, pay them to like me. Uh, so I, I have a group program. I have two group programs. I'll just talk about my, my large group program right now as like 90 uh, members of a, of a business coaching group. Okay. And the price is 120. Well, I, there's two tiers, but anyway, I'll just say the majority are at the $120 a month tier. I don't actually calculate $120 a month of profit. No way. No, I, I calculate like at least $30 down already is what I'm paying back to the group for taking on certain roles in the group. So like I have certain roles. I have one role is like uh, you can be, uh, you can look out for the forum and be one of the first people to reply in the forum, 30 bucks a month, go, <laughs> you know, like have fun. There's no requirement. You could do, you know, whatever. It doesn't be how they do. And then another role in the group is to host, host group sessions where they're talking about a particular topic, implementing a particular course of mine, you know, was it sixty dollars a month? Go, you 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 can you can have that, and you can you could you know, good luck. And even if nobody shows up, you're still studying yourself. You're getting paid to study. Go for it, okay. And then another role is, which is the majority of the roles, is like okay, you get to check in with one other group member per month. Like ideally, you meet up with them for just half hour, where you're being present and listening to what their priorities are for the month as, re as related to the group, as related to the major topic we're all working on. 
you get to check in with them and like support them in that and encourage them to, you know, use the group and stuff like that. 30 bucks a month, you know, even if they don't respond, you can at least email them once a month to say, hey, I'm, I'm still here. Let's meet up. You can. And so most of my group members are getting paid by me just a little bit, like part of their fee. And, um, and it's so strange because I, well, I think I started this last year and it works. It, it just works. It gets people because they're like, oh, I got this. Okay. I'm going to continue on my, my own way of using the, the, the program in a way that makes sense to me. And then I'll, I'll use because I, my program has different parts. So um, I, anyway, there you have it. Two completely different responses. Um, personally, I, I, I prefer Taylor's response, but uh, mine may be practical at some point as well. And um, so with that, let's move on to the next question. Uh, the question here is someone who wrote, George, I, I, instead of creating a public community, right, I'd rather nurture a private, like typically when we think about growing an audience, growing a business, you know, oh, well, of course you have to have social media. You have, to, you have a Facebook page or Instagram or, or, or YouTube or whatever. And for whatever reason, this person says, well, can I, instead of that, can I do a private group and I nurture a community in private. I'm assuming this means it's a free, free private community rather. Well, of course you can do a paid private group. That's, that's a product, that's a program service, but what about a free private group? Can that help with business? I'm assuming. And the person who, who asked the question, you can, you can um, chime in if you want to in, in the chat below with any, anything else you want to add to this. But um, I'll, I'll start with something. And then Taylor, if you have anything you want to add, feel free. Um, so of course, I prefer to do it the way I'm doing it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have continued doing it. I used to have a private group. I'll start with there. I used to have several private Facebook groups that I was hoping to grow and nurture uh, that they could become clients or whatnot. Some of them might, you know. And um, over time, I noticed that, well, I had to put quite a bit of energy to nurturing a private group because, well, especially if you're using something like Facebook groups, when they log into Facebook, you're competing, you know, their attention is being compete. You're, you're competing to get their attention versus all the other Facebook posts that there are. I mean, you could nurture like a private Mighty Networks group or a private, any of the lots of other software out there for private groups. But I've noticed that it's it's hard enough to nurture a paid private group, let you know, to keep it active, let alone a free private group, where the more energy you put in, because well, it probably takes quite a bit of nurturing to stay alive, the free private group to actually be, because people aren't paying for it. So they're like, oh, I just wanted the groups I joined. There's there's no, I have no skin in the game. It's just, yeah. unless you, unless you're doing, unless, okay, this is one possible option, unless you're making it an, an application only group, you have to apply, maybe do an interview or something, and then you get into the private group and then, you know, maybe there's a, there's a reason they might get kicked out. Like if they're not active or something like that, like, like then I can imagine a, a private group being serious enough to stay engaged with each other. Because I don't know if the person asking me and any of you who have thought about this, have you tried running a private group? You know how much energy it takes. And then my concern is, which is what I experienced, as I kept trying to make the group continue to go, I was like, I'm doing this for free. I, I, I started to lose energy for it. And I'm like, gosh, that, this is not even paid. Now I got to convert them right into a paid thing. It's like, anyway, it, it felt it felt like double effort for me. And so this is why I no longer do free groups of any kind. Any group I do is paid. Um, now, having said that, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. And I'm really looking forward, uh, Taylor, if you have anything you want to add to it, um, feel free. Do we know any more of the context of um, this group? I I don't, but uh, if the person who asked the question wants to uh, unmute and 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 say more, I'm I'm welcome. I'm welcoming of that. Um, and I uh, I also see a, a chat here 
the business advice I've gotten, it's not the person who asked the question, but someone wrote, the business advice I've always gotten is to start a free Facebook group and post daily and weekly and do live videos. But I've had I've not had much success and it also felt like a struggle from all my limited time. Uh, I wonder if it's you know my age, Gen X, Facebook. Um, no, I, I have seen this with other generations as well. I feel like, yeah, anyway. So Taylor, I don't know, based on that context. Yeah. Yeah, I without context, it's hard to say, but yeah. where where I'm looking is a couple things. One is every business has what you can call a sales funnel, which is some way that you're meeting people and having a conversation that's appropriate for where they are in their journey with you. Client client journey. Yeah. Right. So they're on a journey in their relationship with you. Okay. And the question is really, what's the right, what's the right conversation to be having with them at that point? point in their journey. You know, you just, you, you walk into, um, a coffee shop and, you know, there's somebody at another table that, um, you know, is reading something that looks interesting and you don't walk over and start diving into their romantic relationship. You say, Oh, Hey, I noticed you're reading the such and such book. How, you know, how is it? So we have this built in, uh, intelligence, uh, that we apply in, in most parts of our lives, but it's kind of easy to lose sight of that when we're in a digital interaction. And so I'm giving all this context by a long way of saying, where are you in the conversation? And, and then the question is, what's the right tool for the job? And so social media is a tool for a conversation that people can just jump into, you know, it's easy to jump into the conversation that you're having. They're anonymous, for the most part, it depends which platform you choose, but they're relatively anonymous depending on the platform. Um, and they can just start getting to know you and like you and trust you, right? So the question is, what's the purpose that a private community serves? What problem does it solve, right? Um, so we, we identified the, hey, don't be awkward. <laughs> uh, start with something light enough that you can establish a connection, right? That's that's the problem that the, oh, how's that book uh, or social media. Right. Um, so anyway, just kind of a first principles approach to what, you know, what conversation are you trying to have? That's awesome. That's, that's, that's helpful, man. And, um, okay. I'm aware of the time. I want to try to let us all go on time. I, I do have a couple questions, um, that were chatted earlier. Maybe we could do a lightning round and, uh, we'll, we'll try to, we'll try to help, help out with these questions as we can. Okay. One, um, question here uh, from Colleen. How do you reconcile being burnt out on the tsunami of content coming towards us and then working to add to that tsunami ourselves? It's a great question. Uh, briefly, I'll just say that um, it's not a tsunami in that people can't escape from it. Okay, It's a tsunami where people are running towards it. Right. In other words, people go on social media and they're delighted to be able to see new stuff. They don't <laughs> different from a tsunami where everyone is running away from it, okay? So they're, they're going there. And what they want to see is something that's meaningful for them, maybe funny, maybe um, uplifting, um, energizing for them. What they don't want to see is a bunch of stuff that's not relevant or boring or like irrelevant to them, basically. And so you're not adding to a bunch of, well, I'm assuming you're not adding, are you adding irrelevant stuff that's unmeaningful? I hope not. <laughs> Well, you're, of course, you want to add, you've, you're going to add meaningful stuff for the kind of person you're thinking of reaching. Well, they're, they're looking for that too. So, Taylor, anything you want to say? Because you and I are both creating regularly. How, how do you feel about adding to the noise, Taylor? <laughs> yeah, I think this is a, this is a, like, this is like a metaphor yes. that sounds really unhelpful and disempowering. So I'm going to give you a different visual. We've all had a time in our life where we were sitting on the couch with a good friend or family member who was going through something, a business challenge, a relationship challenge, or something, right? And they shared and then they stopped sharing. And using our discernment, we decided either to remain silent or to contribute something to that conversation. 
And social media is the same thing. You're not on a couch. There's no difference though. The difference is in your mind. It's in our minds. So use your discernment, right? When you're on social media, when you're creating content, there's real people there, you know, in this case, there might, it's not one person on your couch, it's five or 10 or a thousand, but the potential for that conversation is the same. The, in, the potential for intimacy is the same. And we should really, you know, if we want to cr create a, a powerful conversation, we should hold ourselves to that same standard and say, this person who just shared with me that they're in this tough situation, do I have something to, to offer them? using my discernment, am I going to be brave enough to say, yeah, this is actually, this can serve them. And if so, great, serve that person. If not, that's great too, you know, and, you know, maybe it's a pat on the back or on social media, it's just silence. That's okay. Um, but there's no tsunami. That's something that we make up, you know, it's a, it's, it's a visual that's unnecessary and I think not accurate. Yeah, yeah, appreciate that. Okay, next question. Uh, thank you, Wesley. And a question for both of us. What are the pros and cons of offering one-to-one -one coaching versus, as single sessions, a la carte, versus bundling into session packages? And I'll just briefly say, I think, one, I think a la carte sessions are a great way for you to try each other out. But as you know, well, if they can get all the work that they need with you in a single session or occasional one session, you know, uh, every six months or something like that. Well, that's fine, but they're probably not your ideal client. Your ideal client probably wants to meet with you on a regular basis. And there's a lot of deep work to do together. Taylor, what do you think? Um, I think it has to do with what, what structure most impact is the most empowering for both of you. So it's going to depend on what you're trying to do together. Right. So, you know, let's take it out of the realm of coaching for a second. Like if, you know, if you want to date somebody at some point, you get to a point where the structure of, Hey, we're casually dating no longer empowers both of you. You want to be exclusive, right? That's you're now introducing a commitment that supports the experience that you want to have for yourself. And the other person gets to say, do the same, right? So in this case, you're kind of holding the space for both of you. It's a little different than a romantic relationship in that way. You, you need to create a structure that's empowering for you and you believe is likely to be empowering for them as well. And then you're inviting them into that commitment. And just like asking somebody to be your girlfriend, some people, you can invite somebody into that and they can say, no, it's not right for me, but but you're not going to keep going with that person if they say no, because it's, it's not going to work for you. So yeah, I would explore what is the structure that really serves both of you and, and then explain that to them. And then they have the chance to step into that or not. And, and both are okay. Yeah. I love that. Appreciate that. Yeah. Third question. And this one, um, you might be able to say more to this, uh, Taylor SEO search engine optimization, Focusmates website is way bigger than georgecow.com. So you guys have thought probably a lot more about SEO than, than I have. Basically, this person is saying, hey, someone wants to sell me SEO services. Do I need this or can I do it by just being better with my content? Any, any advice on SEO? Um, yeah, it really depends on the business. Um, but... Yeah, SEO is if you have people that are searching for terms or phrases that make them very, very likely to be interested in what you do. So in other words, um, I fix air conditioners. I, you know, somebody searches for um, air conditioner repair. Oh, not, okay. not literally. You're just saying, in, imagine that you did. Yeah. Imagine that I fix air conditioners. <laughs> okay. A good search term to rank for might be air conditioner repair. Right. But, um, you know, what to do on a hot summer day, somebody might be searching for that. That would not be a very helpful search term. And so if SEO is a good fit for us, especially as a small business, it's likely because there are search terms that demonstrate very high intent for our thing 
and we can rank for that, meaning we can get very high in the search results for that. Um, so if that's true for your business, SEO could be a good fit for you where you, you really go after those search terms that demonstrate very high intent for what you do. And you're confident you can get up into the first page or top of the first page for that search term. If not, um, I think it's, it's probably a waste of money. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's a very simplified. No, take. it's, it's yeah. good. I, I, and coming from your experience, I think that's really useful. I'll say one thing, cause I have been around the marketing game for 15 years and I'll say anyone who is pitching you on marketing services, you should probably run the other direction except for George Cow and his courses, but anyone else, <laughs> no, no, but seriously, um, there are plenty of spammers and scammers who are not going to, who are going to appear to be doing something helpful, but the long-term SEO is going to be damaged when you say yes to pitches towards you. If you really are, really want to pay for SEO services, you should ask around to your friends, to people you trust who are business savvy or tech savvy. And if they are using someone for SEO that they really can vouch for, and by the way, SEO takes 18 months. So they have to be using someone for like, yeah, I've been using this person for two years now, love them, go for it. But uh, ignore all the incoming messages inviting you to SEO calls, call, you know, direct messages, emails. Many of them are, 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 are just, they don't know what they're doing because they wouldn't have to do that if they did, right? Because they would be using SEO, wouldn't they? Okay. <laughs> uh, rather than cold outreach. And second of all, it, a lot of times it does damage your long-term, even though they can get you something short-term. So anyway, I want to, I, we were able to answer the pre, the sent, question sent in advance and even those who are here. I want, thank you so much, everyone, for showing up. Thank you, Taylor, for being here for this. I loved your responses too. And I'm so grateful that we are doing this thing together. And um, yeah, I just want to be able to let you all go on time. Thank you all so much for showing up. Taylor, anything, anything to say before you complete? So fun. So fun. Thanks so much for inviting me, George, and everyone for coming. Great to meet you all. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Try focus, mate. It Try. works. <laughs> right. <laughs> for sure. For sure. I'll put check out the link below. <laughs> All right. Okay, <laughs> folks. Have a wonderful rest of your day and evening. See you around. I hope this was helpful. Thank you all so much. Bye, everyone. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much. Both Thank of you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.